So we are uh, halfway through the talk sessions. And so in this next session, we're going to be looking and unpacking the word augment, or how can we use biology and synthetic biology uh, to improve or enhance the things that already exist. So maybe before it was a little bit about making completely new things, now it's about looking at the things that we have and improving them and augmenting them with these really great tools and technologies that we have in biological engineering. And so to do that, we're gonna have four speakers in this section. The first is Pat, who's going to be talking about wearable organs. And then we're going to hear from Yi Yun Lim, the director of the MIT Design Lab, who will be talking about wearables and a really cool collaboration with Puma. And then Ritu Raman, from the Wanger Lab will come up and speak about biohybrid materials. And then finally, uh, we'll conclude with uh, Deepak Mishra, uh, who will be uh, talking about some of the really cool work that he's doing in biological circuits. He's actually my TA for a course on that subject, so <laughs> that'll be cool to hear from him. All right, great. Thank you. Okay. Um, as a speaker, I also feel, as an organizer, I also feel that I need to kind of contain myself. So we kind of finish and have lunch on time. Um, I'm Pat from the Fluid Interfaces Group, and I'm going to talk about the programmable biodigital organ. Um, and be, usually I begin with dinosaur, but now I'm going to begin with space exploration. Um, so we say that space is the final frontier of humanity. Um, we try to augment ourselves so we can go to space. And many technology that we saw in um, sci-fi about space have actually inspired many technology from smartphone to Google Glass, wearable, and so on. And one of the most profound technology um, for me is the idea of cyborg, which stands for cybernetic organism, something that we saw a lot um, in, in science fiction. But this is actually uh, a, a technical uh, concept that was proposed by Professor Manfred Klein and Nathan Klein um, nine years before uh, Apollo 11 in 1970. And the idea of cyborg is to um, augmenting biological organ with um, digital and artificial um, part that we put on our human body. And this is actually um, the concept that inspired um, the very, very first um, space suit that allowed human to go and explore space. Um, however, one thing about cyborg that I think is really interesting is that you know, cyborg is supposed to allow us to be free so we can explore more. So instead of having this clunky machine, we should make things kind of seamless and you know, fluidly integrate with ourselves. So that's the philosophy of our group, the fluid interface, where we create technology that seamlessly sense the context, and not just sense, but also intervene at the right moment, create the condition for the body to thrive and, you know, enhance us in, in multiple ways. Um, most of the current wearable look at electrophysiological signal, EEG, heart rate, and so on. This is kind of easier to sense because it's purely electrical. Um, the work that, that we are presenting and, and, and exploring here um, are looking at the biochemical signal, um, the DNA, the RNA, biomarkers, and so on, which are really interesting and are more difficult. Um, however, as you see in many of the presentation, this is an emerging area that we are super excited about. So um, the idea of programmable organ that I'm gonna present today is centered around these biochemical signals. How do we sense um, better and also intervene in the right moment? Right now, the two projects that I'm gonna present is kind of not working together yet, but this is our vision for the future. So start from sensing. You know, there's no hospital in space. Um, if you're sick, uh, there is a medical officer on board that will come and put this different kind of device on you to check your body. Um, this is the process usually done in the laboratory, whether you take the saliva, urine, blood sample, and so on. Um, but instead of having this giant lab that do multiple things, what if we can put the lab on the human body and then allow the human body to have um, access um, to all kind of information that we are actually already streaming out? And what I mean by this is that in the human body, when we sweat, when we have you know, saliva coming out, when we uh, pee, go to the bathroom, we release chemical um, from our body all the time. And this chemical can reveal about the state of the human body. Um, we are interested in, uh, in saliva particularly because, you know, as we know in Boston, we don't sweat all the time. We are kind of cold and, um, you know, in our sweater. Uh, so, um, 
So saliva is something that is produced constantly and also contain chemical that we also take in. So not just measuring the body information, but also the thing that you input into your body. And saliva have been used to measure depression, fatigue, health failure, um, all kind of, of, of biomarkers. As you see, the biofluid from the blood um, also diffused to, to, bio, to, to saliva. And um, the prototype that we are working on, we call it wearable lab on the body, is a on-body fluid handling device taking saliva and put it on all kind of biosensor. Right now, the device is kind of huge, um, but we are working on miniaturizing it. Essentially, it has a tube that goes inside your mouth, constantly taking your saliva out, and place it on um, biomarkers. As you've already seen in many presentations, people are developing all kinds of biomarkers to send different type of, of information. And um, what we create is a platform that you can integrate different kind of biomarker in the strip, and the device will keep rolling them, so we have new sensor every time we want to do new measurement, and also be able to switch between different kind of sensor. If you want to sense 100 things, you just add it into the strip. So we kind of think of it as like, you know, iPhone for biosensor, um, instead of having um, different device for different thing, why not having one device that you can integrate multiple sensor and have that, um, you know, be able to scale. And uh, in the device we have um, colorimetric sensor that convert the, the reaction that happened on the strip um, into digital concentration of uh, different biomarkers. And we can also contextualize it with the accelerometer information that coming from the device. So we know if the person is speaking, drinking, chewing, and then use that to contextualize. If you see a high spike in glucose and you know that the person is eating something, then you know that it's probably from the food, not from the body. And in the future, when there's a pandemic like this, where we have coronavirus everywhere, having a lab on the body can help you kind of check whether you are being contaminated or not. And if our vision is successful, we should have something much smaller and more fluid, more fluidly integrated with the human body. This is the vision we are working toward. So now, augmentation, right? Not just the sensing. How do we intervene in the right moment? Um, when we think about biochemical intervention, it sounds scary, something you might think of like coming out of Gattaca or, or to sci-fi, but it's actually something that you guys, all of you might already had earlier, just in the break, when you take you know, caffeine, drink coffee, take serotonin before going to sleep, or even taking medicine, these are compounds that our body cannot biologically produce, right? We kind of have this biochemical input to the body um, to intervene and make our body kind of heal better or be more active. So what if we can have a, an organ that can be programmed to produce these kind of molecule to help us you know, have a healthier lifestyle or augment our ability? So now we are kind of focusing more on the bio, um, uh, kind of synthesis reactor. This is building on top of many exciting research on bioproduction where we are using living cell to produce all kind of bioactive compounds from therapeutic molecule and, and so on. And many more, uh, more molecules are being um, researched uh, and, and have been engineered for the bacteria to produce. For example, one of the most exciting things is to produce a uh, you know, uh, cannabinoid compound so we can get high, no, so we can get more healthier. Um, uh, uh, yeah. Actually, this is from um, uh, Ginkgo and, and Otto Group have been looking into bioproduction of um, cannabinoid and, and, um, yeah, and, and molecule from this family. So what we are proposing is a wearable biosynthesis reactor, an on-body fluid device for programmable cellular manufacturing. Um, but how do we control the cell to produce what we want, right? We need to communicate with the cell. Um, one thing that we... Uh, and be looking into in collaboration with Chris Roy Group is to use um, light as a medium because light can be something that digital can produce, also the cell can receive. So this genetic circuit allows the cell to be able to sense different wavelengths and activate different genetic pathway, allowing us to have a switchable um, program. So not just programming bacteria to make one thing, you can now switch them using digital output, which is the light. And you can kind of switch out the output to produce kind of three different compounds, different molecules, and, and so on. And to demonstrate this, we are using um, a circuit that uh, engineered to produce three different um, protein as the output. And when we kind of culture the circuit inside um, kind of light activated reactor, we can see that we have a like, corresponding protein when we shine different light on them, allowing us to digitally control gene expression. We still have some leakage problem because you know, when we turn off the light, there's still some um, you know, leakage or, or production, but that's something that we are working on um, to solve it. But essentially, the vision is not just to have synthetic biology, but have bio-digital interface that allow the cell to kind of you know, be in communication with digital system. 
And we also, in, uh, thanks to the support from FarmLab, be able to collaborate and, and characterize different ways that we can integrate this you know, digital control uh, cell inside microfluidic channel that we can wear on the body. The ultimate vision is to have a device that you can wear like an Apple Watch that in the future can produce molecules to help you stay healthier and, and so on. We are more focused, most focusing on um, for astronaut because um, this is more an extreme environment and um, in the long term vision, we want to be able to have this closed loop system where we can sense the state of the body and then actuate at the same time. Also, um, how do we enable this beyond astronaut in the future far, far away? Um, we hope that you know, when, instead of drinking the caffeine, you can produce the molecule on the body so then you uh, reduce the risk of overdosing and then having the personalized kind of chemical intervention for each person. Um, yeah, if you want to be more creative, maybe a little bit of, uh, you know what, you know what um, could it help. Um, <laughs> We really believe that human augmentation is something that we need to be think serious about. So our group also cared deeply about the ethics of our work. Who has the right to control your metabolism? And how do we prevent people from thinking that, oh, a cell is just a computer, so human is just a group of cells, so we can treat human like a computer. We want to, to go, get away from that and, and think that this is an, an enhancement of human expression rather than um, exploitation. And you know, there's a, a lot of uh, things that, that we need to think about. However, biotech is still in the infancy mode. So we have um, a little bit more time to think about, but I um, encourage everyone to uh, look at uh, different ethical um, kind of argument and discussion around this. NSF has a nice report on nanotech and human enhancement that outline all the important questions we should think about when we think about augmentation. And with that, you know, I would like to thank our amazing team and, and support Professor Paddy Mars and all my collaborators, uh, David Kong, George Church, for being on my thesis committee. You know, when we do biotech, um, we also have a huge team because it's good to fail together and also to succeed together as well. So with that, I end with a dinosaur. Thank you so much. Yeah.